Attention pro athletes. Want to secure your financial legacy and thrive off the field? Oak Bridge Wealth Management, led by wealth manager Chris Anasetti, is your dedicated financial planning ally. But don't take it from me. Take it from the Dallas Cowboys, Tyler Biotish. He says, Chris set goals financially and has been incredibly impactful in my journey in the NFL. Experience our customized, comprehensive approach, trusted by top NFL players. Don't leave your financial success to chance. Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anaceti. That's OakbridgeWM underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And let Oakbridge Wealth Management guide you across the goal line. to Believe in Badgers on the Believe Network, presented by BetOnline.ag and Oak Bridge Wealth Management. Once again, I'm Matt Perkins, joined, as always, by Badger legend, the Hebrew hammer himself, Matt Bernstein. Bernie, how are we doing today? We're good. I don't want to flex around this guy, but, uh, dude, we're, we're, every day's a holiday on the podcast, man. I, I'm so excited. We have, like, I would say Matt Perkins, we talked about this, probably one of our favorite under-the-radar players, I think, or, well, above radar but for us under the radar you explain it better matt perkins Uh, he's just he's someone that we love to watch play at every single level uh someone who i think uh sort of embodies a lot of uh the toughness and resilience of uh wisconsin program in general it's chris marigos chris thank you so much for being here hey fellas thanks for having me on it's great to be here Awesome. Yeah, we are very excited to talk to you. Um, and we're going to get into that in just a second. Before we do, want to remind you guys that we are presented by betonline.ag, where they continue to be your number one source for all of your online sports wagering needs. You name it, they've got it over there at Bet Online. Head on over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit with our promo code Believe. That's B-L-E-A-V, Bet Online, where the game starts. Like we usually do, we're going to start from the beginning. Uh, back in Racine, Wisconsin, uh, Chris. So first question for you, just uh, like Bernie always says, little Chris, what's he like? How does he get into sports in general? And sort of what is going on as a, as a young kid? Oh, little, little Chris was mischievous, man. He's a little mischievous kid. Uh, <laughs> you know, my, uh, my mom always says I had so much energy and she just had to keep me focused. So sports was the answer for me. So uh it was good, man. It was, uh, grew up in Racine, Wisconsin, most famous for like O and H Kringle. I don't know. They sell them at Trader Joe's everywhere across the country. They're pretty good, man. doesn't help the waistline out, but it's awesome. So that's, that's really the claim to fame in the hometown. And, um, yeah, it was a great upbringing, man. Just love sports at a young age. And, and it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Cold up there though. <laughs> it, it's definitely cold in Wisconsin. I, I found that out the hard way. Um, I would say that we share that. Cr- I, I don't want to say crazy energy, but my mom's like, dude, you're signing up for football. Like you just would fit into this role. And it was made sense at the time for me. hundred percent, Matt, especially how you play football, man. You were, you were smacking people all the time, running through people. So I couldn't imagine you not playing football. That, that would be a scary sight for the world. <laughs> you know, you said I would have been eating Kringles sitting on a couch doing nothing is what I would have been doing. Um, wait, yeah. by the way, if you, I know you didn't go to Wisconsin to start, but I didn't. I, I guess re- rereading Wikipedia, dude, you would have been. We would have overlapped for a year, dude. That would have been crazy, right? Crazy. I, t- I just oh, didn't even gosh. realize. You know, man. you know what's crazy, bro? I used to go up to Badger games like when I was in high school or like you know middle school, and I remember you playing, bro. And it was like you, you were the hero, man, jumping over guys and running through guys. I'm like, oh. My, you, you set the pace for me, man, to what it was take to, to look like a Wisconsin Badger player, man. So I can remember those those very vividly, man, those those memories very distinctly. <laughs> yeah. That would have been crazy. Cry. If you Dude, don't make me blush on this show. I really appreciate it, though. That's really kind of you. But, um, man, that would have been so fun. We would have hit a lot of helmets, I think. Yeah, I think uh, I, I definitely know I wouldn't want to see you in an A-gap, though, and like on a lead or nothing like that. I'm, just, I'm, I'm going for your ankles, bro, for sure. Believe me. <laughs> I, I, would, I would have advised you in, in that way. But so, oh, so young Chris, playing football, loving it, playing other sports. What, what else were you getting into? You know, man, just for the most part, just sports, man. I mean, that was kind of the ticket for me. 
Um, you know, just love playing football. I started playing tackle football at a really young age, you know, but anything that, that I could play in whatever season it was for, I mean, I was, I was all in on that, man. I mean, basketball, baseball, ran track and field, um, you know, played some soccer early on in my life, but then football kind of took over in the falls and all that kind of stuff. So it was, it was, it kept me busy, man. It was, it was fun, man. I had a brother, so he was three years older than me. So he was always beating up on me, man. So, I mean, that's really what made me tough as a kid. We were, you know, we had the brawls out in the front yard, you know, in the uh, basketball court with the hoop at the house and all that. We're playing jock jams, listening to all the music and all that, all that fun stuff, man. Just, just uh, having a great time. So it was, it was cool, man. It was. I'm thankful for that. So, so what what was it like then? You, you you playing football in high school. When did it start becoming something like I can use this? I can take this to the next level. Like when did you start to come into my own and say, man, this is this is a ticket to go to college? Yeah, man. You know, I don't necessarily know about college, but I started getting pretty good. Probably like maybe like freshman sophomore year of high school. You started like you know things started kind of coming together. Started realizing. You know, kids in the area, you're competing at a level for that, those types of things. And then, you know, really college started becoming more of a more of a realistic dream for me. Probably junior, senior year, really senior, senior year was starting to really solidify that uh, to make that happen. So at that point, were schools only recruiting you as a receiver, just like as a general athlete? Like, and we know you ended up at like at Western Michigan as, you know, starting as a receiver. But was everyone looking at you receiver? Because obviously everyone knows when you came to Wisconsin, you became a safety. Yeah, no, strictly a wide receiver. So I was just a slot receiver, and everybody was recruiting me in that way. I played both ways, um, but for the most part, everybody was recruiting me as a receiver. So what do you so, like about – did you like playing receiver more than you like playing defensive back at that point? Uh, I thought I did until, until I started playing defense, but <laughs> – but then when you see guys like Bernstein over there, man, you, gotta, you start second guessing it, man. When you got to hit those big, those big guys hurt when you hit them, man. <laughs> so, uh, so who else was on? Uh, I appreciate that. Believe me. Um, who else was on the board then to you know Western Michigan? Who else is there with those with that school? Yeah, that's a uh, you know not not a whole ton. Illinois State was really the school that was really the one that I was probably going to end up going to if it wasn't Western Michigan. So that was um, that was probably the hottest school at me uh, at the time. Northern Iowa was a school that was interested a little bit here and there. My dad actually played football there. They had a little bit of interest, um, but really it was like Illinois State was one of the really big schools that were were kind of at me, um, you, you know, to come play there for them. So what made Western Michigan the place where you wanted to be? Yeah, it's it's a good question. So Western Michigan was unique because they had a guy named Greg Jennings. He was a wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. Never heard and of him. Never heard of him. Yeah. Anybody One of the room. coolest videos on YouTube of him in a video game. Yeah. <laughs> I, know what you're talking about. I think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> Greg Jennings, one of the hottest hit. Yeah. Yeah, or no, no, that was David Turner. No, Greg James put the team on my back, right? <laughs> yeah, it broke my leg earlier, and he's running. Yeah. <laughs> he's so funny. He's neither here nor there. But Greg Jennings was at Western Michigan. Okay. Yeah, so Greg Jennings at Western Michigan. He was going his senior year when I entered as a freshman. And um, the guy who recruited me, Jake Moreland, he was from the Milwaukee area. He went um, he went to Mar Milwaukee Marquette, I believe, high school. So he was in the area recruiting. And they really liked me a lot. They ran a spread offense. I was playing wide receiver at the time. Greg Jennings was there. He's like solid guy. Like everything you heard about him uh, was just a stand up guy. He was a phenomenal player. So I thought, man, I always wanted to play Division One. You know, um, Illinois State was one AA or FCS now. And I thought, man, what a great person to learn under and kind of see. And it was big time college football. It gave me the best opportunity to compete at the highest level because I really believed in myself. So that, that was a, a big deciding factor. And and, uh, you know, it's, it, um, it was a good place. It was a good place. And so, like, you were starting there by, what, like halfway through your freshman year or so? Yeah, I, I ended up I traveling with the team I read in my first season, and then I ended up using a red shirt. And then the next year, my freshman year, I, I was end up like a full-time starter, yeah, from, from really early on. So it was, it was cool, man. It was, it was fun times, man. It was definitely a growing experience, man, leaving the state and, Man, it's uh, it's an interesting time of life for sure, as you so, guys know. 
So then what makes you come back to the state, come back home and, you know, uh, and take on a new opportunity at a new position? Yeah, for sure. Well, I was starting. And so kind of the agreement coming out of high school was if I was a, you know, major contributor, full-time starter that I'd be put on scholarship. And there was still all the back and forth going with the coach. And, you know, I was getting a, I was getting to run around up and down and in and out. So I thought, you know what? I can't play for somebody I don't trust, man. It's my style of play, man. It was, I was, uh, I was a guy who just left, left it all on the field every play. So I, I needed to have, you know, full confidence in the people I was around and uh, trust is a big thing for me. And so, you know, I just didn't feel like I was quite getting that and, and quite getting the honesty that, that I thought I had deserved and, and the foundation I had laid already at the school. And so, you know, it was um, it was time for me to, to transfer out of there, man. So it was, it was unfortunate, but it was necessary, as you guys know. So is that 2006? Yeah, that was 2006. Yep. After so, the 2006 season. So we all know the transfer portal is bananas now. But when you did it, it was not it's not like this. What what was your experience like trying to transfer? How did you do it? How did you go about it? It just seems like today's day and age, everything's online and everything is so easily you can see every kid. They have film from everywhere, huddle the whole night. What was it, sure. what was your experience like trying to trying to transfer? Oh man, well, you know, you got VHS tape, you know, you got those like docs TVs, VHS tape to the CD and you're trying to dub your, your, you know, VHS mm -hmm. onto your CDs just to put like a highlight tape together. And all that. But I had a, when I transferred out, I had to like go to the academic advisor, then the coaching and the athletic department had to like sign off on what schools you're able to actually transfer to. And then when I transfer, you know, now it's like you can transfer and kids are making all this money on NIL stuff. But for me, it was like, it was one of those deals where I actually had to sit out a season, even though I was a walk on, even though I was going to a higher, I guess, conference or a bigger division one school, but division one, division one, I had to sit out a whole season. So I burned my whole redshirt sophomore year at Wisconsin and everybody was calling me nuts, uh, you know, to go and do that. They were like, man, if you're not, if you're not getting a scholarship at Western Michigan, making it there, what are you going to do at Wisconsin moving up and wasting a whole year of eligibility and, I don't know, man. Just uh, just felt like the right right situation. Prayed a lot about it. It just kind of worked out. So, like, how do you get in contact? Because that's Coach B at that time. And so, like, yeah. what? How do you get sort of? How do your people talk to his people? Like, what what's that process like? Yeah, well, man, I didn't have many. I didn't have people back then. <laughs> like, it was me, man. <laughs> that was it. But uh, my brother was Bucky Badger, which is crazy, and uh, he did some some functions on campus, student uh, ministry campuses, uh, functions on campus, and knew a guy, Luke Swan, Matt, who I, Mercy, I know who you know. Mm -hmm. And um, Luke was a former walk-on from Fenimore, Wisconsin, knew my brother. They did um, a lot of stuff together around campus. And my brother said, hey, man, look, my, my brother's a, a walk-on wide receiver. He's from Wisconsin. You know, he's got a very similar background to yourself. Would you mind maybe taking a look at his film? And Luke Swan was like, yeah, uh, I'll take a look at it. So I Facebook, my brother lets me know, I Facebook Luke Swan. Luke Swan uh, gives me his address. I send him my film and he watches it and he's like, hey, man, like, I really like your film. I'm going to show, I think it was Tyler Donovan at the time, the quarterback. And Tyler Donovan watched it and was like, dude, this guy's good. So I think they watched it together. I know Luke did for sure. Um, and so for right after that, Luke takes it up to Brett Bielema, the head coach, Coach Bielma sees it. Next thing I know, Coach Bielma's calling me, man, and he's like, we want you to come on the team. So kind of a, as you guys know, that the recruiting efforts nowadays, man, are elaborate and crazy. So it's, it's amazing how, how it kind of shook out. How, and how much did you know about the Wisconsin walk-on tradition at that point? A lot. Well, just, just being from Wisconsin, you know, young kid. I was, you know, played youth football. So my dad, my dad was one of my youth football coaches growing up. But the thing about it was, is uh, we would get done with our games like early on a Saturday morning. And then we'd drive up to Madison, which is like an hour and a half from our hometown. And we'd watch the games and all that. I was watching Matt jumping over people and all that stuff. You know, it was, it was awesome. But, you know, it was like, it was crazy, man. It was like, you know, Nick Davis and Jim Leonard's and, you know, all these guys, right? Like, like the legends of the walk-on that you're watching that were just phenomenal players and so as a young kid, you knew a lot about that walk-on tradition and what it meant to the program, to the team, to the state. You know, a lot of blue-collar guys that, that were about it just doing things the right way. So, you know, you just knew a lot about it. You would hope that you would play for the Badgers in that capacity some way. And it turns out, here I am being a walk-on. It was, it was super cool, man. It was, it was an honor and a privilege, man. Greatest time of my life. 
Chris, first off, this is an amazing story. Go back a little bit, though, to your phone call with Coach B. Because, <laughs> first off, I'm sure you didn't think it might have been elevated to the head coach of the Wisconsin Badgers. I mean, what's that like? Did you think it was going to get there? Like, once you sent it to Luke Swan, like, what's in your mind at that point? Dude, honestly, man, I sent my phone to Luke Swan thinking he'd give me some pointers. Like, hey, you can work on this as a receiver, or that, and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, bro, like here, like I'm I'm talking with Brett Bielma. He has me come to Madison. I'm sitting in his office, you know, like up in that head coach's office up there. You're overlooking the whole stadium, and I'm I'm like, what am I doing here? How did I even get here, right? And Coach Bielma's telling me, hey man, like love your film, and of course he was explaining to me how he was a walk on, how I'd get a fair shake, and I said, look, man, like I don't want any promises. Like just give me an opportunity, man. Like I'd love to just come prove myself give me an opportunity to come play and compete. And like, that's all I'm asking for. Just, just be fair to me. Um, and he, he gave me his word that he'd be fair to me. And, and he meant every word of that, man. He, he really lived up to his word. And I'm really grateful for coach Bielema and, and what he was able to, to afford to give me that opportunity. Wait, Chris, go back. To, now I need to ask you more of like a inner confidence piece because <laughs> you did something that's very hard to do, I think, during the time period. Um, what's it like to just have that trust in you? I think – I don't know if students have it now or student-athletes have it now. I think it's a lot different. But what's what's that like? Tell people what it's like for you that you literally trusted yourself to go play in college, to go transfer when it wasn't – when people were thinking you were crazy, but you knew in yourself that you could do it. And then you became a star in the NFL. That's – not normal anymore that mindset so i would love to hear more about kind of your your mental for sure man well as you know man like football's hard right i mean at, at any level especially like big 10 big big time football like that there's players and it's so competitive it's it's hard man it's it's a it's a really competitive uh you know a lot of guys that have a great skill set it's it's um it definitely challenges you for sure you know for me my mindset i already knew Go, being at Western Michigan, I had played against the Virginias and schools like that, Florida State, you know, been around that kind of stuff. So I had been in those places. I knew that I could could maybe compete at that level. I didn't necessarily know how far I could develop to that level, but I knew that I could play at that level for sure. And I knew that I really believed in my work ethic. I knew that there wasn't going to be much that was going to deter me or, or shake my confidence. Now, looking back on it, there was a million times your confidence has, was shooken, you know, and, and you just you think about that. And you're sometimes you're wondering, did I make the right moves? You know, when you're in those those moments and <laughs> you, you internally panic a little bit and, you're, and you, you, you maybe have some self-doubt and things of like that. But you just got to always fall back to, you know, the people that you have around you, who you are, always remembering what's at the core and the identity of, of, of who you are. And my faith was really important to me too, man. And, uh, you know, for me, it was, it was a culmination of a lot of things, man. A lot, a lot of support around me that pushed me through those hard moments when you lose confidence. But at the end of the day, I was always confident in my preparation and my approach. And that's really what would help me in those times to, you know, really see it through and, you know, keep elevating the game. When was the moment that you needed that support the most? Like what was the, the closest that your confidence got to being broken? Oh man. Well, when I left Western Michigan to go to Wisconsin, man, that was, that was a tough time, bro. I mean, that was, that was difficult. And I knew that's what I needed to do because all the right doors were opening up and I knew I had to do that. Um, but I, there, there were moments at Wisconsin when I was playing receiver and then co when coach Bielema asked me to switch the defense, um, you know, it was one of those deals where, you know, it's a little bit unknown and, and you're learning a whole new position. You know, imagine as a wide receiver, you're running forward. Everybody tells you the play before you break the huddle. And now you're on defense. You do everything backwards and you you're reacting off of what the offense does. So at that stage of my career, you know, I was going into my redshirt junior year at that. It was spring going into my redshirt junior year. You know, that's a that's a big jump, man. So there was plenty of times where, you know, you're thinking, man, am I doing the right thing? What am I doing? You know, is this even going to make sense? And it just kind of just kept evolving and happening. And, you know, I had great family around me. My girlfriend, who's my wife, uh, my girlfriend at the time, who's my wife now, uh, was huge in my support uh, and my development. Great family and friends. I mean, all my family are, are Badger graduates. So they were always encouraging me coming to games. Keep going, man. You know, all that kind of <laughs> stuff. And, you know, so that was that was huge for sure. 
you won. Your wife is one of the most lovely humans I've ever met. It's just oh, so nice. You. It's it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, she's beautiful. she's gr- I mean, she and she's a great social butterfly. Like she says hi yeah. to everyone. It's it, my wife. If she's listening, is not the biggest social butterfly, um, <laughs> which is fine because I take a, I do a lot of social for both of us. Right. Um, there you go. Uh, wait, so so quick question: did, did you just hug Luke Swan when you got there? Oh, dude. So what's even crazier, listen to this. So I'm thinking, so I go to Western Michigan, kind of like learn underneath Greg Jennings, or at least watch him. I mean, Greg was great to me, like su- super great, but he was older, right? I mean, he was senior at the time. I was a freshman, you know? So for him, you know, I just kind of was able to watch him from afar. So I thought, man, if I'm going to Wisconsin, Luke Swan at the time was like, he was the guy, like he was like one of the best players on the whole entire team. And so when I'm transferring in from Western Michigan, Luke Swan, I'm thinking, hey, I could learn from him, kind of like I learned underneath Greg James. Maybe he'd take me under his, his wing. And so I'm talking to Luke and getting ready to, you know, come in there for the year. And Luke's like, hey, man, like, I'm looking for a roommate for this year. Like, would you want to be roommates together? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, bro, are you kidding me, bro? Like, this is perfect. Like, you're the guy that I want to be. And like, we could be roommates together. We could hang out. Like you could show me the ropes, integrate me to the team, to the I'm like, it was just like, that's why all the doors were opening for me to go to Wisconsin. It was very, very, very difficult, uh, you know, decision to make. And, you know, but all those things, all those factors were just, it was a no brainer. So. So how long did you and Luke live together for? So me and Luke were, were together just that year. Okay. You know? and, uh, Cause he was a senior and I was a retro sophomore at that time. And uh, it was actually kind of cool. Our, our relationship evolved uh, really, really cool. It was like Luke was like a mentor and a guy that I looked up to. And then like we became like really close friends. And I don't know if you guys remember this. Maybe you do or don't. But Luke in the middle of the year, he was getting, you know, all these looks, all these NFL scouts were coming. They were saying he was going to be a mid-round draft pick. And I think it was in October. Uh, he was going across the middle to catch a pass against, I think it was Illinois. And he got hit from behind and his whole hamstring completely snapped off of his 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 leg and his at that point uh you know it was it was uh surgery time his senior year was over you know a guy like him you know he needed to have good film and to be able to showcase you know him his skill set to the nfl scouts i don't i think he was like a a late pro day guy like he really couldn't um you know for the time frame that he got hurt to have the surgery and come back i don't think he could kind of get himself to where he could in that short amount of time frame to to give those scouts but he got to a, a training camp but during that time he was having surgery. I was able to kind of take care of him. We got really close in that time, um, you know, to, to, to be able to, to connect and kind of become close brothers. That's wild that this guy showed coach B your film and then asked you to live together. It's so crazy. Cool. Crazy. Yep. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It, spe- <laughs> it speaks to something like very special. I think about Wisconsin, at least the football team. Cause I can't speak for all the other teams, but, the brotherhood, the amount of people, the amount that you care about people on the team is, to me, is like, I mean, there's some, there's some weird apples or some bad apples, one or two, but majority, yeah. like you love everyone on the team. For sure, man. And honestly, uh, Matt, it's like, it's so cool, man. Cause like you were at kind of a, a generation or a, a cycle before me, right? Like you were a little bit older, but like, Bro, the connection like with you and other guys on, uh, you know, from the programs years before Scott Young's of the world, guys in the, you know, nineties, two thousand, you know, like it's it's stuff like that where it's like the cross generations and cycles and eras, like the appreciation, the love, the support is so deep, and the connection is so real, and that's what makes Wisconsin such a great place and the football program so spectacular because everybody's rooting each other on. Everybody wants to see the best for each other. Everybody wants to see the program succeed regardless. And so, I don't know, man, it's just, it's a really cool place, man. Like I, I couldn't imagine ever having an alma mater be any, anything different. And, and like you, man, like all of us, like we're super lucky, right? Well, super lucky. it's and, funny that you uh, mentioned the, uh, the generation thing because Bernie and I were at squat fest this year. I don't know if you saw anything about squat fest online, yeah. but we got to, hang out and talk with a bunch of players and coaches and everything. And it was wonderful. Coach Collins, we're coming back whether you want it or not (laughs) next year. Um, But one of the questions that we asked uh, was which former Badger do you wish you could have played with? What former Badger football player would you want to play with? I know his answer. Come here, come here, come here. 
Come here. I know his answer. I know his answer. I know his answer. J.J. Watt. That's his dad. No. Chris Maragos. Shout out Chris Maragos. We got one guy. We got one guy. It's better than nobody. It's better than nobody. Hey, we'll take one. Hey, all you need is one, right? That's one more than most. That's one more than most. But what does it mean? Like when you hear that, that guys from, a, like you said, a couple cycles after you are still saying, hey, I want to be like him. I wish I could have played with him. You know, man, um, it's really special. And and the, the big reason why is because there were guys that were ahead of me that I looked up to in that way that that I wanted to be like and that set, you know, a certain standard and um, and set the bar really high, you know, for for what it looked like to, to play the game the right way and, and uh, you know, to kind of be a role model. So, you know, for me then to be another cog in the wheel in the program and in the history of it, to be that for a next generation – you just hope that it can continue to keep trickling down that. I think, you know, that was Owen Arnett, I think, you know, because, and so, you know, for him, you know, he can now be that and do that. And then hopefully there's some other kid that like, like I was, or, or he was driving up, watching the batter games after your youth game that, that want to be and, and play and be a part of the program that they can continue to do that. And that, you know, that just that generation, that cycle can just keep, keep happening. And that's, that's what makes the state of Wisconsin great is the people in it. And that's what makes the program so great on the football team. I think it's, I just think it's so cool that somebody literally shouted you out at squad. <laughs> You're talking about multiple generations though, out now, right? You're, you graduated in 2008, 2009. Yeah, yep, 2009. Yep. was my last year. You're talking about so. 14 years. That's a long dude. time to be remembered, dude. That's, I just think that's so cool. That, that is a long time, man. Actually, now that you start thinking about it, you're like, geez. Well, and I mean, Bernie, at least his position still exists. I, don't go there. The low blow, Matt Perkins. Let's, hey. let, we're not talking about the fullback position. And hey, the reason why it's not existing anymore is because nobody could quite do it like you, Bernstein. That's why. But, listen, you the played with some good guys. You played with some good guys. There are some studs. I mean, look, Derek Watt's still killing it. Like yep. they're Alec Ingold's pro bowler this year. Like there's some guys, some studs. Wait. So Chris, let's go back. Cause so you come in, you think you're going to play wide receiver. You're with Luke. You got all these things. You're like, okay, this is happening. What's the yep. conversation? Like, did you know it was coming? Like what's the conversation with coach B when he's thinking about switching you over? Man, it was a, uh, well at that time, you know, here I am as a walk on and the head coach still knows my name at this point. Right. So <laughs> I'm like, you know what, this is a plus at this point. Right. And you know, when your head coach comes to you and he's a former walk on and he's got all this great experience and he's a great coach, he was a great player says, Hey man, I really see a future for you at defense. At that point, you're like, okay, you see something in me. <laughs> Let's go, man. Like, you know, and a lot of times, you know, it's weird, man, like in your life as, as you guys go through it, man, like I'm sure you guys have experienced in your own lives. Somebody was cheering for you along the way or somebody was encouraging you along the way. That was a linchpin in your growth and your development that kind of believed in you before you even knew or believed in yourself. Maybe it was your mom. I don't know. I, I mean, I hope everybody's mom kind of believed in them or at least they told them they did. Or at least my mom told me I was the most handsome man in the world. But he, we know that was a lie. So I don't know. Right. <laughs> Oh man. Well, that's but what my mom is, told me too. <laughs> yeah, so what's going on here, bro? Like, yeah, we look a little similar, but I don't know, man. One of us has got to be out, I guess. <laughs> it's me for We're sure. Like one and one A. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But you know, like for Coach Bielma to to see that in me and to believe in me before I even knew uh was huge. And it gives you that confidence. And that's kind of like we talked a little about earlier. Those, those confidence builders are those things that kind of help propel you in those times where there's unknown or your confidence is shaking a little bit. Uh, it was huge, man. To, so to have that support and, and kind of that, that vote of confidence was, was big for me. Attention athletes. Do you want a frictionless and tailored financial planning experience to secure your future? Well, look no further. Introducing Oak Bridge Wealth Management, the premier financial planning firm for professional athletes. Led by wealth manager, Chris Anasetti, our team provides a unique and comprehensive approach, ensuring your financial success both on and off the field. We understand the unique challenges you face as a professional athlete, from managing cash flow habits to planning major business purchases and navigating complex contracts. 
That's why we've developed a proven process, working closely with our strategic partners to provide seamless solutions for your unique financial journey. Our services evolve with your career, offering short, mid, and long-term goal setting, portfolio optimization, real estate investments, and more. As you transition to life beyond the field, we support you with career development and philanthropic ventures. But don't just take our word for it. Top NFL players like Chase Roulier, Tyler Biotish, Alec Ingold, and more trust Oak Bridge Wealth Management to guide them towards financial success. Troy Dye of the Minnesota Vikings says, I really love the work that Chris and the rest of the Oak Bridge group do. I especially like the honesty and transparency when it comes to setting up financial goals and plans that best fit my needs and situation. It's time to elevate your financial game plan. Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anicetti. That's OakbridgeWM underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And join the winning team. So, so Chris, did... Did playing wide receiver give you a little bit of an edge when you switched over, knowing kind of what they do, how they act, how they move? Did that help you in your in your transformation, in your change of position? Huge, bro. I mean, humongous. Just because as a receiver, you understand splits, what offenses are trying to do to the defense. So when you start to understand the defense, you know there's a there's a weakness to every defense that's called, whatever it is, right? Whether it's a blitz, man to man, zone, whatever coverage uh, is called, and so. You know, for me, understanding those receivers, what they wanted to do, how they wanted to do it, even little things like having that inside knowledge. Like if, if I was playing in the middle of the field, deep safety, and the quarterback's throwing a post route, well, I know that the quarterback's coach are telling them, you throw that ball one yard outside the hash, 40 to 45 yards down the field, right? So I knew if I ever got caught in a bad situation on the field and the post route's getting thrown, I'm running to a spot, right, just to get back. Like So – Things like that were so big um, and just understanding stems of receivers. If a guy's inside releasing, okay, he can only run these one or two routes based out of this formation. So it was things like that that helped me speed up from a defensive backs wise. I had to learn the, the body feel and the rhythm and all that kind of stuff. That was really difficult terminology, uh, putting yourself in the right positions, but able to catch up to the offense. That was, that was really, really helpful. So once everything kind of married together, it was more shot out of a cannon which in the long term helped me because I didn't have a whole lot of time to develop at the position in college. Go for it, Matt Perkins. See, now I was going to say, now I'm just letting you go at this point. Okay. So you um, you get there. Who are some of the guys at the position who are sort of like taking you under their wing and doing, is there anyone who can quite do what Luke Swan was doing for you at that position? You know, it was, it was a lot of me watching, a guy who was huge for me was Jim Leonard in the off seasons. Jim Leonard was coming and he was playing, I think it was Baltimore at the time. He had just left Buffalo. I think he was playing for Baltimore. And the thing is, is he would come in. And I remember one time being starstruck, bro. I was at my locker and it was the off season. Jim Leonard was back working out. And of course, you know, Jim Leonard's like the golden boy, of Wisconsin, like all American boy, all that kind of stuff. Right. And, uh, you know, me being pale skinned and short and, uh, you know, a try hard safety, that was like <laughs> that was like the epitome to be like him. So one day he's walking through the locker room to go to pick up like his clean clothes. He was getting ready to work out. And I was like, my like jaw dropped. I was like, that's Jim Leonard. So I was begging this guy to teach me something. And it turns out he's uh, he's got time in the off season. We started watching film together. We started doing drills together, started learning things. I'd, I'd pick his brain, watching film, stuff like that. And uh, he was huge for my development uh, as a player, too, big time. So what did it mean to you to have a Wisconsin legend take an interest in you? And was he another one of those people who, like you said about Coach B, believed in you before you did? Big time. I mean, that was that was like another one of those moments. You know, Coach Bielma believes in me. Uh, You know, it's like Luke Swan. He's believing in me, helping me. You got Jim Leonard believing in me, you know, helping me. You know, and, and gosh, man, I could tell you a million stories. We could talk for 10 hours here about all the people from the NFL all the way up, where it's like these key moments of just people that were so gracious to me that really helped me at key moments, man. But for him to take a liking to me when he didn't need to, I mean, the guy was in like his fourth or fifth year in the NFL at the time. You know, he's 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 getting ready to 
signed big contracts and he's really solidified himself, obviously as a college player, but as an NFL player. So for him to take the time for me, I was a walk on at the time. And it wasn't like I was like this, like all big 10 player at the moment. And so he was, he was just kind of just, you know, being a good dude. And I think he, he really understood that too, because with him being a walk on, he needed somebody to look out for him too. Right. And to be a good guy to him and, and to maybe believe in him or make the road a little bit easier. So just, just key moments, man, at key times, it's, you can't, you can't write it up any differently. No, I, no, you can't write it up any differently. To watch film with Jimmy Leonard for Coach B to yeah. see that you could play. I mean, unbel- th- these things are are so cool. That's why we love doing this because how would anyone know this stuff, yeah. right? Like it's it, – your story is so cool, so unique. But Jimmy was like one of my favorite people. He was also a Jet, which makes me very happy, although – he wasn't no, – no matter when you're a Jet, you're, you're pretty much a loser unless you're like 90 years old now. Um, that's, I mean, that's, yeah. but, that, but that's really fascinating. So so let's get to like being on the field, man. You're, you're from Wisconsin. You've watched games. You've come to visit. You're practicing in the facility. You're practicing on – you know, in Camp Randall. What's it like running out for your first game? Like how are you – what do you feel like? I mean outside of the redshirt year or the, the year you had to sit out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I can remember the first time we came out the tunnel. So that, they actually moved the tunnel now um, from where where it used to be. We used to come right down the middle of the tunnel. Um, and so I think we were playing Marshall that game. And gosh, man, you, you can just remember as a kid lining up, watching the team walk out. You know, you kind of take that walk out of the locker room, McLean Center area right there. And then, you you, you know, you kind of go outside the stadium and then you come down that middle, middle area right there. And I can just remember, like, just being there, man. It was, you know, you're looking around, you see – it's almost like out of body experience. You're a kid growing up, wanting to be Wisconsin Badger. You're looking around. Everybody's in a Wisconsin helmet. You know, you're you're wearing the jersey. You look down. You're. It's like the fans are getting ready to roll, and then you, you come out of that thing, man. It's just like fans are going nuts. Bands playing. You lose your mind. You like you can't think at the moment. You black out. All of a sudden, you're on the sideline, right? You know, like. <laughs> Oh man! So good thing I wasn't able to play, or I mean, well, I did play in that game, but uh, yeah, I didn't play as significantly because I don't know if I would have been ready quite yet. I was a little, a little frazzled. <laughs> well, well, explain that a little bit because I, I think um, even like uh, we just saw, I uh, saw it on Instagram. Um, TJ Watt when Herbig had a strip sack for a touchdown, was that right? He's like, I just wanted him to take a moment and tried to like guide him to do it because you don't remember these things and. And it's hard to sit here and think back to the first time you run out. Walking through the tunnel was my all, not through the tunnel now, the old, that's my all time favorite experience to, to handshake people, fans who are out there. Like that was so cool to me. But explain that like frazzled feel of like running out. I mean, running out onto Camp Randall Stadium and, and you know, the state is bananas for football. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was cool, man. Like, like you're looking around going, man. Are we even doing this? And then, then you got to focus in. And you're like, I got a game to play right now. I got to remember what I got to do here. Like, <laughs> stop mess this up here for the team, right? Yeah. Well, it, it is weird. It, it's like um, you remember snapshot moments. Like, I, all right. So the, the game you jumped over the guy, you kept jumping over. Was that Penn State? Yep. Okay. So my memory serves me right. I mean, were you really thinking? I mean, maybe by the second or third time or whatever, you did it. But like at first, you did it, and then you're like. You probably reacted, and then you're on the ground. You're like, "What just happened?" Like, right? Like, it's just it's crazy. It, it's very funny. Uh, we talk about like moments. These, these this is a, a smaller moment. It's one of my favorite. And I, Matt Perkins knows it. But John Klingscale, a guard, he was like, "Dude, first off, we ran to Joe Thomas's side the whole time." Oh, Klingscale goes, I do that, right? I mean, obviously, you have to go that way. I mean, I was running a four seven at the time. Like, we need people to block dudes for longer right. periods of time. And Quinkscale comes up to me and goes, dude, follow me the whole time. Don't – he's like, just follow me. You're going to make it. And I remember – I don't – the first play, like 12, 13 yards, I remember – I just remember what I see now on TV on – on when I watch. Like, Battery was right there. I think, like, Dantes came out of, like um, – he was a defensive – uh was he? A, he was a linebacker. Came out from, like, five yards and hit me in the back. And Dwayne Smith was jumping up and down. <laughs> and like, I, no, I don't re- really, like, remember that. I just remember being like, shoot, I'm going to be tired this game, man. If we're going to keep running this much, like, I'm going to be tired. <laughs> I'm going to keep running this play. Barry's going to keep calling this play until it – And you're right, though. They're jumping over. You know, it was just a reaction. Get up super excited and then 
run back to the huddle and you're like, oh my God, did that really happen? But what's the next play? Because it comes in real quick and you just real quick, bro. Real you got to catch it. What was, was that a, like a power play to the left or what was that? It was, it was like a bomb. Play? It was an ISO. ISO. Man. That's, but, dude, but that agree, but, so what's it like then you start getting in the game, you start having pr- productivity. Mm-hmm. W- what's that like? Like, how does that feel? Man, well, you know, man, like when you played, like that progression of like your confidence building and then like you're, you're making some plays and you're, you're trying to play within the system. And then you start getting a little confident. You start going, all right, like I'm, I'm going to start coming in here attacking this game. Like I'm taking this thing over now. Like and so it's like this progression of like you get your feet wet. Uh, your confidence starts building. You start you start getting a good feel for the rhythm of the games, what's expected, what to do. And then all of a sudden, man, it was like just things just kept kind of progressing. And and as soon as that that standard kind of raises, you just you got to keep jumping up to it to to keep going. Right. And, you know, that's what you just you got to push the envelope, man. And so I kept trying to do, man, just play aggressive, play fast. You know, you start getting more confident and, and understanding what offenses are trying to do. And that's when I really started started putting together the, you know, the physicality of what a defensive player needs to do in terms of backpedaling, tackling, hitting, hitting, hit tackling techniques. And then that's when the offensive knowledge started coming in where I'm going, all right, man, look, it's first and 10. I got this tight end motion over here, you know, off tackle, like I'm getting outside zone heavy. Like, so now here I am rolling down on the box and I'm just teeing off. You know, it's like, Stuff like that where you just start playing faster, you start getting more confident, and then, you know, things just keep building. The ball starts coming your way. Just, I don't know, man. Just it's how, how it happens. So, How much freedom did you have in in the system to do things like that, like when you spotted that without – there's not enough time to change the coverage, you know, on the back end? Yeah, for sure. So Dave Dave Dorn, man, I love Dave Dorn, man. He was our D coordinator, and he's a great man. He's doing such a great job at NC State. But, you know, he was really good at – allowing me just to play ball. Uh, a lot of times I was playing free safety. I was back deep and we were obviously had to play within the system, but man, like he, he would let me go and he'd let me trust my gut. And if I was, you know, coming to make a play on a, a cross route or something and, and uh, you know, the, the plays that I made in practice or the or in the game, if I did it, the trust would build a little bit more. And if I didn't, <laughs> the Rams would get pulled in a little bit. You know, I, I get that look. All right, all right, listen, man, a little too much here, you know. Right? <laughs> but, you know, he was uh, he was awesome, man. He, you know, he knew we were, we were trying to win. I think that's that's the best thing is like, you, you know, the guys that are just trying to win and play, you know, you, you play with those type of players that are doing everything they can to win and they want what's best for, for the team and, you know, you just you got to appreciate that. So I appreciated playing with guys like that. And I was always trying to be like that every time I stepped out on the field. Just be accountable. Right. So do you have like a specific favorite memory in Badger in, you know, your Badger uniform? Man, there, there's a there's a lot of good moments, man. There really are. There was a time we were playing Minnesota. I believe it was my senior year. We were playing them at Wisconsin and uh, we were we were in the end zone away from the student section. And it was fourth quarter. Right. And I just remember, you know, we're going in the fourth quarter and here I am, I was playing, I was, I was think I was lined up as the free safety and I see all of the 10 guys in front of me. We're, you know, it's a long time out. Right. And um, it's one of, like, one of those experiences where you're kind of like talking to yourself and you're like, man, like, this is so cool. You're looking at your teammates. You're amongst some of the best athletes in the whole world, right. Country, at least at that time. And then all of a sudden jump around is going, right? And, you know, you're looking through your teammates across the field to the whole jump around. And it was just like, it was just one of those super cool moments where you're just like, man, like how awesome is this that you get to experience this and be a part of this? And then you start thinking to yourself, how the heck am I even here right now? Like, what am I doing? Like, especially knowing like being a walk-on and like all the stuff we just talked about, you're just like, what is going on? I'm like, and then I don't know. You just got to, just got to get that ax back right there, man. That's, that, that was it. <laughs> you got to snap back in, bro. <laughs> Let's get that. Ax. <laughs> so, so crazy. You were obviously had a phenomenal career at Wisconsin. Yeah. What transition to now? You're a walk on. You started at Eastern Michigan. You walked on. You moved positions. Now you're going, and people are saying, "Hey, Chris, you can go to the NFL." That must have been one of the coolest things I think you've probably ever been through. Um, what was your experience like training, thinking about that? Like, what who, was who did you have anyone who was like, dude, you can do this, you should go do this? 
you know, man, it was um, similar. You know, it's a lot of unknowns, but you're confident and you got scouts telling you, OK, you know, you got agents calling you, the, things like that. But then you're going, man, like, I don't know, man. Like it just it, it snapped you right back to those moments when you're walking out of Western Michigan or walking out of Wisconsin. It was like all this unknown. You just all you knew was to work. Right. And uh, my main trainer uh, down at Next Level, Brad Arnett, he was amazing for me, man. Believed in me, trained me super hard. He was super gracious to me. He was my trainer all throughout my NFL career. And, um, you know, he just, he, he gave me his everything. And at that time I was coming off a toe injury in the bowl game and he really worked around kind of my situation to get me back where I need to be to get ready for pro days and, and that kind of stuff. And, and I, all I knew was, is I was just going to, I was going to go in there and I was just going to let the chips fall as they may. And I trained as hard as I could, had a really great pro day. And, uh, you know, start taking a couple visits to some 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 teams and sure enough, here comes a draft and and then it just starts starts happening. Man. It happens quick. It's crazy. What piece of advice would you have for the guys who are now going through that draft process? But, you know, whether it's Braylon Allen or, you know, anyone yeah. else. Yeah, that's a great question. There, there's so many distractions through this process. I mean, combines and all these uh, marketing deals and all this other stuff. Man, the golden goose and the ticket is what you do with your career. So just don't lose sight of as exciting as it is, turning pro, going pro and all that. Just focus on football, man. Focus on developing your body, getting your body set and laying that foundation because, man, it's like the house that wasn't built on the foundation, bro. That a storm is coming, boy. I tell you what, the the – the rains are coming, the thunder's coming, the, <laughs> the the tornado, the hurricane, whatever you want to call it, it's coming, man. The high winds. And if that house ain't built on that foundation, man, because the NFL is a different animal. And you better be, you better be, you better build your body right and build that mind strong because it's very competitive and uh, you got to be able to weather that storm big time. So don't, don't lose sight of just playing ball. So like, did you have like a welcome to the NFL moment? Oh man. Yeah. So, um, yeah, a million of them. <laughs> uh, I don't even know which one to give you, man. Oh, I can tell you my first game of that experience. Well, my first regular season game. So can't make this up. Grow up in Wisconsin, want to be a Badger, Wisconsin kid through and through play for the Badgers. My first NFL game, I'm playing for the San Francisco 49ers in Lambeau field against the green Bay Packers. So you can imagine all my family's already season ticket holders and they're all Packers <laughs> fans. So everybody's there that I know, right? First game, it's in December. Man, one of the first plays, it might've been the first play of the game. So it's kickoff return, right? And all I remember is, is <laughs> we set up this return and it was one of those like really funny moments where, you know, all week, you know, your coach telling, all right, Marigo, so you're lining up at, uh, right guard or you know right tackle on the kickoff return team and you're gonna block the r3 or whatever it was so i'm like okay cool man like whatever you're gonna drop back to the 25 yard line you're gonna set your hips you're gonna strike the guy you know we're gonna run it right up okay cool man let's go so here i am on the field and like you know you set up you're in lambeau field all that kind of stuff and you look over you always count the kickoff team from outside in right so you the outside guy is usually like a corner, say like small guy. He's a guy that folds inside. He's a safety valve. And the whole rest of the team runs on a kickoff. He trails behind. So they put like little quicker guys that are good tacklers in those spots. So little guy, R1. Next guy over R2 is usually like a small linebacker, safety, whatever. Okay, cool, man. And then I flip my eyes over to R3, and it is a behemoth of a man. And I'm like uh, – Dude, this guy is like 270 and just like yoked up. And I'm like, good God at this point. So here I am at this moment. So ball gets kicked off. I drop back. I think his name was Eric Walden. I think his name was. He played for the Colts. You got to look this guy up, bro. If you can pop a picture up of this guy. It's, so I pop back. to my, uh, Here I am. You know, I said I got my feet up. I try to set my hip, strike this guy. Boom, boy. And I'm flat back. And all I can remember is being on the turf of Lambeau Field thinking, my whole family and everybody. <laughs> <I love that. laughs> yeah, man. So it was uh it was one of those moments, man, that uh definitely welcome to the NFL. First NFL game getting flat back, man. It was uh I understood where this story was going from the beginning because I was on kick return my entire career at Wisconsin. And no matter who they put, 
it was never it was never R two and it was never R one and it was always these in, in, three and four. You never wanted to do three and four. You, there it is, bro. He was playing for the Packers at the time, I believe. Yep. <laughs> uh, you never want to see three and four or five, really. Like you never want to. Those are the big monsters that come and blow you up. And at this time, oh. the NFL allowed that. So big, thing, bro. They Dude, loved the it. Thing is, you know, most of the time, like. On kickoff, guys are like trying to like speed adjust and like you know move their body and juke you out and give you head bobs. This guy was doing none of that. He was like a train on tracks, bro, and it was not slowing down, <laughs> even with my body in his way. <laughs> so you obviously went on in the NFL to be a two-time Super Bowl champ. Um, you you know you made the Pro Bowl. I mean, you did all these incredible things. But I want to talk to you about those the two Super Bowl teams. Now, obviously, it's one of the hardest trophies to earn in sports. What did that Seattle team and that Eagles team have in common that made them so successful? Man, brotherhood. That was the big thing, man. Brotherhood. Th- those are the things that both those teams had in common that was unbreakable. And, you know, to go the distance in the NFL, I can remember any of those times, man, to win a world championship in the NFL, it's got to be one of the hardest things to do. Imagine having 53 players, 10 on the practice squad, whatever it is now, at the time it was 10, uh, front office organizations, marketing, media, liaison, this and that. You got players from all over the world to form this little itty bitty team. And then you got to go through a whole season, stay healthy. You got to have the ball bounce right away. Guys got to do this, that, next thing. I mean, it is so difficult to do, um, and that's why there's just not many repeat champions because it's just it's so hard. Um, that's why some of these amazing quarterbacks might win one. That's why some of these amazing quarterbacks never even win one because it's just really, 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 really difficult. So the fact that our teams had that brotherhood was something that I think was big-time differential for those two Super Bowl teams that were very common for both. Dude, two Super Bowls. I mean, cool. you, uh, you know, like me thinking about your life, I get goosebumps. So I don't even know how you can possibly process your own life. Sometimes, man, you just got to look back and pinch yourself, man. You know, you're just, you're fortunate. You know, there's so many great people along the way that help you get to these moments. And that's really what I think is special is, you know, it's, it's great winning Super Bowls and all those achievements, but man, the people and the, the bonds that you form along the way are so special. And like, you know, when, when you think about those teams, when you think about those moments, like it's, it's the people you're with that, that really make it so spectacular that make it, um, you know, a world-class thing or such a special type, type, uh, type moment. So yeah, man, I'm just really thankful and just really gracious, uh, you know, to have the, you know, the, the teammates and, and the trust of those guys to be a part of it. So nowadays, are you still, are you still in touch with Wisconsin football? Like how, what is your consumption of football in your post playing career been like? <laughs> uh, coaching my little, my, my two boys team. So doing that kind of stuff, still stay up with the Wisconsin Badgers. Matt, I saw you back there. It was at a Nebraska game, right? Yep. That was cool, man. So that was great to see you there. And, and so try to get back to Madison at least once a year and, and see the, everybody up in the athletic department, the coaches and players, um, you know, and then, you know, the guys, the guys that I play with, man, stay up with all those guys, you know, and, and uh, keep up with those guys and lifelong friendships. Like, you know, when you go through the, the physicality of the game of football and all the ups and downs and the ins and outs, like the, 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 the bond is so strong. And so, you know, you, you keep those up with those relationships and the appreciation and the, the funny moments that you had together when we were on the line running and this guy was getting ticked off. You know, you just remember those fun times. Right. And so. Um, so, yeah, man, it's it's good. It's good to stay up with those guys for sure. Wait, Matt Perkins, you must have your uh, like, we'll get you out of here, but you have to answer four questions. I mean, I, I've always got rapid fire questions for sure. Um, OK, first one, who's going to win the college football national championship on Monday? Uh, I, hate I hate to say it, but Michigan. No, I think so. No, wrong answer. I don't you know want them I, to win, but I think they will. I can't, I can't even believe that just came out of my mouth right there. I can't even believe that. But <laughs> you know, a I brotherhood of hating a school is also my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> Who well, is the biggest physical? I mean, you talked about Eric Wallen coming down kickoff. Who was the biggest physical freak you encountered in the NFL? 
a couple guys. Um, Kelvin Johnson, Julio Jones, Julius Peppers, Cam Newton was a big one. Those guys come to mind as just <laughs> touched by the hand of God. <laughs> they were just different than everybody else. <laughs> And you could and you could tell that from just like the moment they stepped on the field. Oh well, I mean, man, like when you're in NFL locker room, guys are like six eight, three thirty, and it's like you know, just everybody's just around. But then you see guys like that, and you're just like when you're when you when you double take or your jaw drops when you see a, a guy out there or whatever, and he just stands out. It, that's when you know it's it's just unbelievable. Um. So, uh, what? Uh, who was the hardest guy to tackle? Ooh, hardest in the guy open to field. Yeah. Oh man, that's a that's a tough one. Like I like 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 on a kickoff return or something like that. Like yeah, punt return or running back at the at, you know who's gotten by the first level and is now in the open field. Chris Johnson, man, was tough when he was. I think I played him against the Jets in the preseason one time. That was crazy, bro. He he uh, he skirted on me one time. Um, let's he see was here. So fast. You guys know who Cordell Patterson was? Of course. You know, He's he, still playing wearing 84 for the Falcons playing tailback. Dude, when he was with the Vikings, man, he was a kickoff returner, and he was coming downhill. That guy is a solid tackle, man. That, like, crazy hard, bro. I mean, he's – but, I mean, dude, like, like I played with LaShawn McCoy, but, you know, playing against him, you know, I never had a tackle with LaShawn. But, dude, that guy, when he was in his prime, was freaky. Adrian Peterson in his prime was crazy. Oh, my gosh. Playing against the Vikings, man. Dude, he skirted on our team. And so Seattle, we have like Hall of Fame defense, right? Like almost everybody on it's like Hall of Fame player, right? And this dude was cutting back and just doing crap. I was like, oh my gosh, man. It was just, it was unbelievable. Yeah, you, it, that was cool. You, you, you mentioned Seattle. Describe uh, Richard Sherman in two sentences. Mm. Richard Sherman is one of the smartest, funniest, most competitive aggressive, gracious guys I've ever met in my life. He, That's the, he fascinates I, I me. To, yeah. I try to encompass a lot of different things there. Richard, I'm a huge <laughs> fan of Richard, man. I love him. That guy. He's awesome. Love that guy. Awesome. And uh, well, I guess we'll get you out of here on this. What did it feel like to win a Super Bowl with a f- fellow Badger in Russ? On yeah, that, team? That, that was cool, man. So Russ was was uh, obviously I didn't get a chance to play with Russ in college at Wisconsin, but then to link up together in Seattle was spectacular. And his process, the way that he carries himself and how methodical he is, is <laughs> the guy's a machine, man. It's it's very impressive. There's no re- there's 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 no shock to why he's been as successful as he's been, and uh, he's been able to accomplish as much as he has. It's I've learned a ton from him, man. He's a really unique person and a special player. For sure. Awesome. Well, I think we will wrap it up there for today, Chris. We cannot thank you enough uh, for joining us here on Believe in Badgers, part of the Believe Network presented by betonline.ag and Oak Bridge Wealth Management. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. Thanks, guys. On Wisconsin.